Welcome back to Let's Discuss. In this video, we'll be discussing how to balance sports at the collegiate level with school. And to help me here with that, I have Hunter Preston here, and I'm going to allow him to introduce himself. How y'all doing? Uh, thank you, Jarvis Davis, for inviting me on Let's Discuss. Uh, my name is Hunter Preston. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a recent graduate of Columbus State. Um, I just graduated with my bachelor's in biology. Um, so I feel like I'm a a certified student athlete, or at least was. Um, I graduated this past May. Um, and then um, immediately after my graduation, I flew out to Spain for a six week basketball camp. So, yes, sir. Whether you're aspiring to be a collegiate athlete or just want to look into the day to day life, this video is for you. So, without further ado, stay tuned and let's discuss life as a student athlete. Hunter, tell us about your background. Where are you from? How long have you been playing basketball? And just talk about how you, you from your start up into getting your, you know, being able to get the chance to play in college. Tell us about that. Okay, I can do that. Um, so I'm from Mobile, Alabama. Um, I would say my start with basketball probably started around middle school. I grew up playing a lot of video games, trying to be a skateboarder, different things, like um, just kind of being a kid. Um, and I realized I was tall enough and it, it was the it was the expectation to play basketball. So I, I went out there and I enjoyed playing. Um, so I started with playing AU, probably seventh grade. Um, joined the basketball team at Palmer Pillins Middle School um, when I was in eighth grade, uh, played there. Uh, we ended up winning the championship for um, I guess uh, Mobile County Middle Schools uh, and then that following year I'm um, going into ninth grade started off at BC Wright High School um, played for the play for them well, excuse me I moved around so much I started off at LaFleur uh, Magnet School I was there for like the first nine weeks of school I was on the basketball team there I ended up going to BC Wright shortly after um, and then um, played at BC Wright for about a year um, then I ended up transferring to St. Luke's Episcopal School um, and as you can see like, I moved around a bunch uh, my mom um, I had different ideas about coaches and, and circumstances, so we, we, we hopped from place to place from time to time. So I played at St. Luke's, which is a uh, two-way school, it's a very small school, private school. Um, played there, um, competed, um, and we went to the 2A uh, division championships, uh, state championships, um, to where we fell short to Lynette. Um, so then um, that following year, uh, my brother and I, we transferred to Theodore High School. So it was a jump from 2A to 7A. And basically we, you know, we had a kind of like a, a basketball shot where we had to realize we, we had to get much better. So we worked really hard that summer before and going into that season, uh, we played really well. Um, in high school, we never had much of an issue with uh, school and basketball, but going into my collegiate career, Coming out of high school, I accepted an offer for a full ride. My brother and I did for a full ride at Sneed State Community College in Boaz, Alabama. Um, and that's where I started my college career. I played there for two years. Um, you know, I had to balance going to classes and even working from time to time and also basketball. Um, just trying to make sure I can be the best player I could be on the court, but also making sure to take my education seriously as well. Um, so I did well enough at Sneed State to be able to um, get an another scholarship offer to come to Columbus State University, uh, which is where I came and played there for three years, if you include the COVID year. And, you know, I, I graduated from there and now I'm looking to expand upon my basketball career uh, professionally. Yeah, that's what's up. That he's had a pretty, uh, it's been a pretty rough, well, not rough, but you know, a tough journey for you. Oh, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, you know, we're both, so to the viewers out there, we're both from Mobile. We've both like been in the basketball circle. So I've I've known Hunter for a pretty long time. Um, how would you say your schedule differed from a regular student once you got to, uh, yeah, to, to talk about that? <laughs> yeah, man, so I would say uh, three days out of the week, um, when all the other kids, are like all the other students are still sleeping, we're up at 5 a.m. Um, getting ready to go to a, a morning conditioning workout. 
Uh, so we get up and we go lift weights and we go do conditioning. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Tuesday and Thursday, we would have individual workouts where we come in um, at a slightly less early time, at around probably 6.45 or 7 a.m. and, you know, get some individual skills workouts in with like a coach uh, based off our position. So for me, I was forward, so I would get up and I'd, I'd come in with the coach and it'd be me and probably three or four other guys who played the four or five position. Um, we just work really hard um, that morning, get a lot of shots up, do a lot of uh, post um, entry work and just, you know, work on things that we would be doing in the game realistically. Uh, so not to mention that. So we're up at this time. We generally had to rush the classes, um, sometimes not even have enough time to shower, um, rushing the classes and then, you know, having to go off the rest of the day with that already limited energy um, just from having to get up so early. It just became something that was a part of our lifestyle as student athletes. Besides school and sports, I know you mentioned um, you worked on and off for that period of time. Um, how did you, were you balancing anything else, work, organizations? Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, I can. Um, so as far as working, when I was at junior college, um, it was a bit easier to do, but it, it was still kind of difficult. Um, I worked at Waffle House, um, cooking from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m and we'll do that Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. And sometimes I would have him on Friday. I was having a rush out of to just to try to get to work. And then I'm at work, you know, on, you know, extremely limited energy because I didn't take advantage of any of my daytime windows to take a nap. Not that there were just a, a, a bunch of them, but uh, I would be really exhausted. And I can say I, I probably didn't need to work as much as I did, but you know, when you're young in college, you know, you just want to have some money in your pocket. Right. You know, to be able to go out to eat, be able to go have fun with your friends. Um, so that was a balance I needed to make. Uh, the weekends were not super social for me, more so during the week on the weeknights, um, because I was at work all weekend or I was sleeping throughout the day after basketball practice or after a game, or, you know, outside of being at work all night. Yeah. Um, were you, did you join any organizations when you were at Columbus State or no? No time? Um, I was I was asked to join, you know, the Kappas, the the, the oh, I can't remember the names, Kappas, uh, the Alphas, a uh, couple of organizations, um, fraternities, um, and you know, it outside of like the expense of like how much it costs, like money wise, to actually be a part of these organizations, it was just something I didn't feel like was on my priority list of like what I need to put time into, um, but I was able to. Um, become connected with um, the, the Baptist Collegiate Ministries on campus, um, which is um, a faith-based organization uh, for um, individuals or individuals who aspire to be uh, followers of Christ. Uh, so that's just, that's something I put a lot of time into. Also became affiliated with Chi Alpha, which is another um, faith-based organization uh, where uh, basically work towards actually um, you know, discipleship and, and being discipled by other students around us. So that was something that was, was really good for us. Let's talk about what's what's next for you. Um, I know you just said you you went to Spain, went to a camp. Um, how did things go over there? Do you feel like that'll that'll lead to something? And if not, what's what's the plan? Okay, yeah. Uh, so I was over at a camp in Spain. Uh, I was with the Euro Pro Basket. Um, Training Academy, uh, which led into the Europe Pro Basket Summer League, which is Europe's largest summer league. Um, I was there when I, I signed up for the six week, uh, which there are increments of 12 weeks, nine weeks, six weeks, three weeks, one week, which is just for the summer league, but of course, different prices. Um, I competed well enough in the in the summer league. Um, I think I averaged around 22 points, 10 rebounds, and I actually won MVP at the camp. So that was a big accomplishment for me. Um, you know, truly a blessing because I, as, as tired as I was, as long as those days were, I didn't know how I was able to like play four proficient games in five days. Um, but you know, it was a grind and it was something that we worked for and worked hard. And I was just blessed to be able to come out as the camp's MVP. And so from that, it opens up opportunities for me to be able to get looks with other teams, um, you know, around Europe. So I'm currently awaiting um, some current interest from different countries in Europe uh, that include like uh, Spain, Portugal, and Norway. So I'm just trying to, you know, see, build that out and kind of see what opportunities come from it. Awesome. Um, 
So like I said, this is about being a, a student athlete. So let's talk about the, the <clears throat> school side of things for a little bit. Um, you were a biology major. Uh -huh. um, how difficult was, was that? And uh, so it was very difficult for me, uh, my first two years at CSU because I was trying to work at the same time. And when I realized that I don't have time to work, I'm just gonna have to be broke. Um, things just got a little bit easier, not so much easier, but a little easier. So um, the time that you have to put in as an athlete on a team um, is nearly as equivalent to the time you need to put in you know, as a student. So you, it's kind of like a full-time job being a, a student athlete. Um, but it's like the energy that you have to put in after you, you've worked out twice already, you're trying to study. You know, you're drowsy come that time, like you're, you're sleepy, like you're like, you're not focused, your body's aching, you're sore, you kind of just want to go shower and lay down. Um, but, you know, I had a lot of late nights, I had a lot of times I took naps and got up, and I'm, you know, at the library, until the library closes at, you know, uh, 12.30 a.m., and then I'm leaving there to go to another location to go study some more. I'm trying to go study at home, trying to sit up in my bed. I wake up the next morning, like, oh, I was asleep. Like, you know, just studying, trying to make sure I'm, um, you know, getting the curriculum that I need, um, that I might've missed due to a basketball outing. We missed a lot of classes uh, with, with sports, um, leaving town and playing games and away games. Um, so the process of having to make up those tests and, and classes and having to deal with professors that sometimes didn't really let you make things up, um, was somewhat difficult, but it's all a part of the grind. Um, they don't make it impossible for us, but they do, they don't work with you as much as you'd like. Um, but I would just say, you know, if you love it, you know, you'll you'll make time for the things you need to do, especially getting your, your degree. Uh, so that's what I did. Um, and I made sure I set out enough time um, to be able to study enough and be able to train enough outside of like practices in school. What was your, um when you decided you were going to major in biology, what was your your end goal on that side? Physical therapist or doctor or what was it? So initially it was becoming a doctor, but as I grew older um, and I prayed on it, I realized my desire wasn't so much to be a, a doctor. Um, I wanted something more of a face-to-face, -face, more of a um, higher patient relationship type um, situation. Um, so I realized that I would have, you know, a, a good a role in occupational therapy. Uh, so I would have to go back to school and get my doctors of occupational therapy. Uh, there are a number of schools, you know, around the country, but I would, I think I'd like to go to school in Alabama or Georgia. Um, but basically I would be able to work with patients, you know, face to face, be able to interact with them and have regular conversation. And it would be something that would naturally be sustained for, you know, maybe a month or longer. Um, on average, just due to the nature of uh, when individuals come to occupational therapy. So a lot of times it's it's helping individuals who you know had an injury and they're learning how to strengthen back that, that joint or that muscle um, or that appendage or they're having to deal with learning how to use an appendage or, or a lack of appendage. Let's just say somebody could be like a um, an amputee and they have to learn how to put on pants without, you know, the use of an uh, of a of, five fingers on one hand or without the use of an arm. So it's just something that I feel like I have the heart to do and I have the patience to do. Um, so, you know, maybe one day it's somewhere I could be at. All right. Um, do you have any any tips for up and coming aspiring college athletes? Man, uh, time management is really key. Um, if you don't, if you struggle with time management, um, I would talk to somebody at the school um, um, they generally have people in like the career design department um, or um, even with counseling um, that can help you understand like what it looks like to map your day out and, and understand like the type of time you need to put away for studying and for training um, and even for yourself like you need to take time for yourself it's not a lot of time to do that but you need wind down time you need time to like uh, mentally just slow down um, because it's it can seem like days, you know, turn into weeks and weeks turn into months and you've just been going, 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 going and because you want to be a great student. You want to be a great athlete. Um, but I would just say, you know, make sure you find time to rest yourself. Um, you know, whatever that looks like, whatever works for you. Um, like um, I would do things like I might just go to the movies by myself. Um, I would just take myself out to eat um, and just be in some silence or I'd 
I remember one time I was in Longhorn Steakhouse by myself. I brought my iPad and my headphones and I was eating a steak dinner and watching anime. So it was just like, do do what works for you. You know, that's something that was um, what was enjoyable for me. Um, so, you know, whatever, whatever makes you uh, feel restful, whatever makes you feel renewed. Um, a lot of time I have to take um, advantage of quiet time. Um, and in that quiet time, just asking to be in the presence of the Lord so that I can be spiritually renewed and understanding like I have stressors in my life, but that doesn't mean I won't be able to deal with them. I just need to make sure I'm taking the proper precautions to be able to uh, deal with them so that I can function well. All right, um, that is it for us today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, like, share, and subscribe to anyone. Um, let me start that over. <laughs> you good. <laughs> all right that is it for us today i hope you all enjoyed this video if so like and subscribe share this video to anyone you think could find it interesting or helpful um it really helps my channel grow and with that being said that's it for us today and i'll talk to y'all later see y'all have a good one